back. So spooky season may be over in the parks, but it is certainly not over on this channel. I have a whole bunch of Halloween Horror Nights videos coming in the next couple of months and hopefully that's going to take us right up until Halloween Horror Nights 29 speculation season. I have an Unmasking the Horror Tour video coming up, an RIP Tour video coming up, loads of Halloween Horror Nights vlogs, so there's definitely loads of Halloween Horror Nights goodness coming your way. And it starts right now with my Halloween Horror Nights 20 review, so let's get into it. So I'm going to start this off by saying that this year was one of my all-time favourite years. And I know that an awful lot of people that I've spoken to anyway kind of feel the same way that I do. It's definitely up there in my top five. And if you're curious about what my top five is, it is Halloween Horror Nights 12, 15, 16, 25 and 28. And I don't really have like a number one, it kind of swaps and changes between probably Sweet 16 and 25 but the rest of it is kind of interchangeable. This year is 100% in that top five though. I think as a whole the event was incredibly strong and you can definitely see that at least amongst the hardcore Halloween Horror Nights fans where everybody's favourite house lists are completely different this year. I definitely didn't feel that there were any really weak houses this year and I found it incredibly hard to make my favourite house list. It changed every single night that I went to the event. It's changed about 12 times since I came home from the event. But I've been home from Orlando for about three weeks now so I've had time to kind of let the event sink in speak with my friends about it. I've spoken quite a lot already on my podcast about it. If you're not already subscribed to that, please go and check out because we talk about everything Universal. We cover Halloween Horror Nights and those episodes are released pretty much weekly so they're a lot more often than these videos are especially in the period between now and about March or April time when we start really getting into the Halloween Horror Night speculation for next year. So I'm going to start off with the overall theme of this year's event which was an 80s theme and I think that's something that was executed very very well. It wasn't too much of an overpowering theme. It was just kind of a thread that pulled everything together. I absolutely adored the decoration in the park. So moving away from the scares and moving away from the houses, just the decoration in general. I noticed that windows were decorated that were never decorated before. There was a lot of absolutely gorgeous vintage style Bicycle decorations, which I am absolutely obsessed with. I think that they look amazing. So the windows were decorated with them. We had the pumpkin bar, which, oh my God, it was gorgeous. So it had like Halloween bunting. It had like Halloween garlands, carved pumpkins, old school Halloween posters. It was absolutely stunning. It was all lit with orange lights. I'm going to insert some pictures throughout this video so you guys can see what I'm talking about if you didn't go to the event or refresh your memory if you did go to the event but I was obsessed with this bar. I honestly wish that we had this year round because it was stunning. The vintage decoration carried through to this year's tribute store so again we had more of the Vaisal decorations with ornaments, with bunting, Ben Cooper masks. We had the Halloween Harlequin wall, the trick or treat wall, <laughs> taken inspiration from, I guess, the walls of Disney. Everybody wanted their pictures taken in front of these walls in the tribute store, and I do not blame them because they were beautiful. As well as the vintage decorations in the tribute store, we also had the Sam, which Again, I adore Sam. I was very, very happy to see Sam back. We had pumpkin-headed scarecrow type things which decorated the outside of the tribute store. We had the huge Stranger Things display inside of the store where we actually had the ashes from the upside down falling around the display, which again was amazing. Kudos to whoever was in charge of decorating the tribute store and the park this year because they did an absolutely amazing job. But let's move on to scare zones. Otherwise, I'm going to talk for this whole entire video about the decorations that Universal had this year. <laughs> so the scare zone that I ranked number five for this year is the Harvest. 
so this is one that i didn't actually manage to go through as many times as the other scare zones and i guess that was maybe just because of the location of it because it was located in the plaza of the stars area of production central so that's the very first route that you walk through as you enter the park and because i was doing stay and scream most nights where i would be at the back of the park at moe's by the time i'd get down to the front of the park that area was just so filled with people who were entering and there was no houses really down that way other than stranger things which would cut a little bit into that scare zone but at the same time that scare zone was made up of an awful lot of scarecrows and if you're a long time viewer or you do listen to the podcast you'll know that i am absolutely terrified of scarecrows but my absolute favorite thing about that scare zone were these huge jack-o-lantern stilt guys that they had and so i could see these guys from afar even though it wasn't in the scares and like if i was in line for halloween or if i was down near felon or i was getting in line for strange things i could see these guys from miles away they were probably some of my favorite costumes of the whole year so the other four scare zones i had an incredibly hard time trying to rank because i did spend a lot of time in the rest of them so right now i am saying that my number four scare zone was revenge of chucky i adored the chucky puppet that we had i thought that the people who were doing the puppeteer work and the people that were doing the voice of chucky were amazing at what they were doing every single time that i was in that zone both casts were always given a million percent the interaction was second to none i had more interaction in that zone than i did in any other i loved watching chucky be savage with absolutely everybody and then i'd hide like no, please don't say anything about me i'm shy <laughs> he did get me one time though I'm debating whether or not I want to upload it but overall it was a super solid zone and I honestly really hope that we see Chucky back at the event in the future. I was so gutted that we didn't have a Tiffany but there's always next time. So my number three scare zone of this year is Twisted Tradition and that is because this zone was just so beautiful. I am a sucker for pumpkins. I always love the pumpkins in the trees and I just loved all of the costume. I didn't necessarily get as much interaction as what I did in the Chucky Zone, but I just think that the set pieces that they had were incredible. That church was stunning. That's probably one of my favourite sets that we've ever had in any scare zone ever. And when I think back of recent years, I think it's definitely things like the church from Twisted Tradition the spaceship from Invasion and the ship from Dead Man's Wharf are all three super well done set pieces and honestly I just really want them to ship that church to England and I'll just keep it in my garden for the next time that they want to use it because it was just so beautiful the way that it lit up at night the sound effects that were coming from it and the fact that they'd put that thing together like overnight that level of work in such a short time blows my mind I didn't have much interaction with the scare actors that were around the church area and I would have loved to have had more interaction with them because they seemed like they were super cool characters and that kind of brought the story together. Everything about it was just so beautiful and I would really love a twisted tradition house so that we can see a little bit more of this story. So my number two was definitely not the scariest of scare zones but was 100% one of the funnest ones and that was Vamp 85. I'd say I probably spent the most time in the scare zone out of all of them i would watch the shoot to thrill show at least once a night i loved it i thought it was so much fun i adored trisha white i honestly feel that she deserves scare actor of the year she gave 110 percent every performance every night she was incredible i had so many fun interactions with her and I really enjoyed watching her interactions with Mark the camera guy and with the vampires and with other guests at the park too. And the soundtrack in that area was spot on. It was so cool. I danced my way through that zone every single night. So that takes us to my number one scare zone of this year, which of course was Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I think a lot of people are in agreement with this. It was such a fun zone. Again, not the scariest of scare zones, but I laughed my head off every single time I was in that zone. The clown's costumes were 
mind-blowing. It was like they'd been transported from the set of the film and I imagine that they would be very hard costumes and masks to make and very hard to wear as well. But the actors in that zone and the guys that work behind the scenes making these did such a fantastic job. I had such fun interactions with all of the clowns, with the Terenzi brothers. I loved the bubbles that when you popped them, smoke would come out of them. I thought that was so cool. I adored hearing the Killer Clown soundtrack, the Killer Clown's dance parties at the end of every night. Amazing. They did a huge and super emotional Killer Clowns dance party on the final night of Horror Nights and my amazing friend Luke took a video of that which I will link somewhere on the screen. It was so cool and I wish I could have seen the final dance party in person. And it broke my heart every single time that the balloon animal search dog would pop. <laughs> because it did nightly. I think everybody that I ever have spoken to about the Killer Clown Sky Zone has said nothing but good things about it. Everybody had an absolute blast going through it and spending time in that zone and we had the Chiodo brothers come down to Orlando to visit the scare zone which was incredibly cool and we also had John Mazzari who composed the music for Killer Clowns take a trip to see the scare zone as well so that must have been such an amazing experience for the creative team to show these guys the work that they'd done and to see the guests having such a fun time with the characters from their film. I super hope that we see the Killer Clowns back at Horror Nights in the future. Moving on to the houses again this is incredibly hard to rank because they were overall a super solid lineup of houses this year but you guys came here to see a ranking of the houses so I've got to give you one. So my number 10 was Blumhouse and I feel terrible putting it all the way down at number 10 and it's not because I don't think it was a good house and because I do stay and scream at Moe's the first houses that we'd be led to would be Slaughter Cinema and Blumhouse and then Dead Exposure would open just a little bit after. So I did this house many many times and I had a good run through every single time. I just felt that it wasn't as strong as some of the absolutely amazing houses that we did have this year. I do really honestly believe that the Blumhouse and Halloween Horror Nights partnership is such an important partnership to the event's future because I feel like Blumhouse have such an extensive catalogue of fantastic horror films that this partnership can only mean good things especially when we look at things like the new Halloween and the opportunities to have that at the events in the future. So my number nine house this year is very very hard to choose but I went with Halloween 4. I absolutely love all of the Halloween films. I really loved the first Halloween house that we had and I loved the Halloween 2 house that we had. I'm glad that we had Halloween 4 this year and I feel like if this was in another year, it would have been much higher on the list than it is on this one. I probably honestly went through Halloween for the least amount of times and not because I didn't like it. I think that in that Shrek building, the line always feels like it's much longer than what's posted. And I think as well because at the front of the park, it's very easy to just hit that house first. And everybody knows who Michael Myers is. Like, even if you're not a super horror fan or you're not a super Halloween Horror Nights fan, you know Michael Myers and you can bet that that's going to be a scary house. So I think it was a popular house. I just didn't enjoy the queuing situation for the house. So I think that's probably why I didn't do it as many times as I did the others. So my number 8 house was probably the most intense house of the year and that was Dead Exposure. So the first time that I went through this house was on my first Horror Nights night this year. So I had just flown in from England, we had basically landed drove to Aventura, thrown our stuff in and went straight to the event. I was absolutely exhausted, I think I'd been awake for like way over 24 hours at this point and we ended up getting to Horror Nights like 8ish or something and we managed to somehow do 9 houses and all the scare zones but I was like a zombie. Like you could have just thrown me in the dead exposure house and people would have just thought I was part of the house but I felt like it was just such an intensely scary house and not necessarily scary in that there was more scare actors in that house. I mean, I don't know if there was, there might have been. But when I was walking through, I 
remember saying to my brother and my friends this house is going on forever like this feels like the longest house of my life and i felt super vulnerable because i couldn't see a thing the strobes were super intense and i felt like there were such long periods between the light going off and the light coming back on again that i honestly could not see anything i had put a bella lugosi pin on my brother's backpack and that just so happened to go in the dark and that was all I could see in front of me and then every time the strobe would come on there'd be a character literally right super close to your face so the whole idea of the house is that there's this disease that's turning people into like flesh-eating zombie type things and there is a vaccine for it but the vaccine causes temporary blindness so we're given the vaccine as we go in and that's kind of like a, a fog spray on us and there's a scene in the house where it's just a room of like red and blue flashing light and that's like us getting our vision back and we start to see colour again and I remember getting to that room on that first run through and I was like I don't think I can do this anymore like, I feel I honestly don't I don't know how much is left of the house I feel like I've been in here for five years I feel super vulnerable I feel super scared I can't see a thing I was just so terrified <laughs> so well done Halloween Horror Nights you did a fantastic job with that house you scared me very very much and again with this house I feel like if this was at another year of the event it most probably would be much higher on the list. Moving on to number seven which is Seeds of Extinction. I thought this was a super interesting house especially when we did our Unmask and the Horror Tour which I'm going to do a whole separate video about so you can see it all in detail. There was just so much cool stuff in here. I really thought that it was interesting how there was no human scares at all. I kind of went into it expecting it to mostly be non-human scares but I did honestly expect to have a couple of humans in there but there was none at all. The only humans that were in there were the dead skeletons of humans that used to exist on earth. I loved the use of the hand puppets in this house. I loved the use of the camouflage scares. We also had the slanted walkway back again this year, which was second floor of a Mexican restaurant that had caved in when this meteor had hit. There's some cool nods in there to Halloween Horror Nights events of the past, like the Good Harvest daycare, which was a nod to the Good Harvest orphanage which is where Cindy was. And there was an art gallery that was displaying pictures from the Dust Bowl, which referenced Scarecrow, which is obviously Scarecrow the Reaping. Had a cool ultraviolet comic book stand in there too, which again, I'll go more in detail with in the Unmasking video. I loved the backstory of this house. I feel like it was a gamble of a house because I feel like it could have really gone either way, but thankfully it went the good way. My number six house this year was Scary Tales and honestly this top six was definitely the hardest of the hard job that was ranking the houses. And I'd probably say three to six have changed the most since my first night of going to Horror Nights this year and I actually changed them around a little bit again just before I started recording so I was like oh do I really want that there? The facade of Scary Tales was gorgeous. I absolutely adored the flying witch. I thought she was incredible. Again, there was water effects in this house, so I would always get soaked in the Humpty Dumpty room. So that was the king's men who couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again, and Humpty Dumpty had splattered all over the place, and all of these king's men have egg all over the faces. I guess that the water spray was them throwing off the egg onto you. I thought the puppets in this house were super cool. We had the cowardly lion puppet at the start of the house and we had the bear puppets and of course we had the return of HHM bear at the end of the house which everybody loved every single time I went through it everybody chanted for HHM bear. Moving on to number five this is how you know that this was an incredibly strong year because my number five which really really surprised me is Stranger Things. Now I am a massive massive fan of Stranger Things. I have watched season one and two probably 30 times. I basically want to have like all of my top five as my number one but <laughs> they think that they all deserve it. The first time that I went through this house I honestly spent the entire time being like oh my god, oh my god, oh my god look at that, oh my god look at that, oh my god look at that Demogorgon. It was incredible. I think the Demogorgon puppets were some of the most amazing puppets that I've ever seen. The face characters that we had in this house were insane. The actor playing Dustin, I literally had to do a triple take 
to make sure that that wasn't the actual dusting it was uncanny i don't know where they found these actors from but they looked so much like the characters it was ridiculous the sets in the house were super immersive i honestly felt like i was walking through a mirkwood the use of the mirrors make it look like it was this expansive forest worked so well i feel like whenever an ip is announced for a house you kind of pick things out that you think well we have to see that and we're gonna have to see that and we're gonna have to see that too and i felt like everything that you would have wanted to see from the season because this house just covered season one was there this house definitely had the longest wait every single night which was unsurprising we knew that that was going to happen but i honestly never ever waited as long as what was posted there were some nights when i'd convinced my friends that we had to get in line and i was like okay guys i know that it's like 90 minutes but it's worth it like i'm i'm down for waiting 90 minutes for this house we'd get in and we'd maybe we wouldn't even wait an hour and universal actually did something that they've never done before this year they actually opened the stranger things house to day guests for one day which was stranger things day on the 6th of november so they didn't change anything about the house it was just as intense as it was at the event and maybe this was testing the waters for us to have a year round house in the future which is something that i would absolutely love I think we're all definitely expecting a Stranger Things 2 house next year and I cannot wait to see it. So my number 4 house again hurts me to put it as number 4 was Trick or Treat. This was such a beautiful house and it's another one again where I walked through pretty much every time like oh my god that's so cool, oh my god look at Sam, oh my god look at all these pumpkins. It felt like I was there in every scene of the film. I had super high hopes for the set design of the quarry and it definitely didn't disappoint. The school bus kids were fantastic. So the facade of this house was Krieg's house. So as we walked into the house Sam would be stood at the top of the stairs and then Krieg would come out, shoot his gun and Sam would disappear. And I didn't see that the first couple of times that I went through. But the first time I saw it I was like wow that's cool. I loved that we got to see Rhonda in the house. I really enjoyed that we reused used the werewolf puppet from American Werewolf in London for the werewolf scene of this house. I feel like this year was very very puppet heavy and I really liked that. I hope that we do see that more in the future. And I'm obsessed with the pumpkin scent that they were pumping as you walked into the house this year. Okay so my number three house this year was Carnival Graveyard and wow what a house this was. You could have spent all day long in this house and you still wouldn't have seen everything in it it was so fantastic there was so much horror nights history in this house so many easter eggs such a fantastic cast and i feel like every time you'd go through you'd find something that you'd never seen in there before i loved the backstory of this house i always love a kind of carnival or a freak show or circusy type of theme anyway the costumes were fantastic there was one guy in particular who was in the area with the alligator in the ball pit and he had like these i think they were like saw like circle saw blades like all stuck in his face and he was terrifying he was really and the noise that would play when he'd come out was really really scary he was probably one of my favorite characters in the house but they were all so fantastic all of the scare actors played these characters so so well you truly believe that you were trespassing i can't wait to show you guys the pictures of this one from the unmask and the horror tour because they took so so many there is so much cool stuff to see and so much cool stuff to talk about so my number two house of this year but my number one original house of the year was slaughter cinema i particularly loved midnight snack too as you can see from my shirt I adored that section of the house. Those little critters were so adorable. I especially loved the little guy with the little top hat and the little monocle. Horror Nights team, if you are watching and you need to offload some of these critters, feel free to send them my way. They were so freaking cute. And obviously scary. They were scary too. There was a giant one which was apparently called Falafel. And he was huge, but I loved seeing these guys. This house... I probably went through the most because this is the one that we'd always head to first and when we'd do stay and scream 
it would have maybe like a five or ten minute line in the beginning and that's because everybody that was in that stains green area would either head to Florida cinema or to bloom house but as soon as we've come out from that first run it was completely empty so most nights we were doing it like maybe three or four times with no line at all just walking straight in and i went to horror nights 11 nights this year so that is an awful lot of slaughter cinema time I thought everything about this house was so cool. I loved the ninja guy at the beginning, sorority sacrifice, of course, pumpkin guts, shitty's kids, the Amazon cannibals from Planet Hell, those ladies were fantastic. And of course, the swamp yeti, and those guys would get me every single time. No matter how many times I went through the house, you could guarantee that I would be running out of it because those swamp yetis were intense. The only thing that I wish that we would have had more of in the house is Cold of the Beast Baby. I feel like that was probably the only scene that I would have wanted a little bit more from, but everything else in that house was amazing. And it was so tough to try and choose between this house and my actual number one, and I kept kind of changing them around all the time. I'm desperate to see a Slaughter Cinema 2. So that means that my number one house of Halloween Horror Nights 28 was Poltergeist, and wow, what a house. This was such a crazy mixture of an IP and an original. So when this house got announced, I was like, okay, Poltergeist is a fantastic film. A lot of things that could be used in the house happen at the end of the film. And I was kind of like, okay, how are they gonna do this? So then when they had the round table discussion with the creative team and they said, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the facade of the house. That's pretty much near the end of the film with the pool scene and we're going to be in the pool and we're going to be looking up at the house and I was like oh, okay then but I am so happy that that's what they chose to do because standing outside of that facade with the rain coming down and smelling the dirt was crazy I felt like I'd just been thrown into the set of the film and when we walked underground underneath the house those were some of the best scares that I've had in the Halloween Horror Nights house. It was terrifying, there were so many scares, you didn't know where they were going to be coming from, you didn't know what was a scare actor and what was fake. I loved seeing the meat crawling across the counter and the face peeling scene. I loved seeing the clown in the house but one of my favourite parts of it was that they took us into the light which we don't do in the film and when they were talking about this before the event had started again i was like oh really okay <laughs> and it just worked so well it was fantastic going through that room with all of the netting and the kind of camouflage scares that would come out from either side was brilliant. If you watched the Poltergeist announcement video that I did, I'd said that one of the things that I really, really wanted to see in the house was the stretching hallway, and we got that too. You can really tell when you're walking through this house that this was a huge passion project for the creative team, and that they put everything into making it, and they really genuinely cared about making this an amazing house, and it just shows. And again, the use of puppetry in the house was amazing. I really loved all of these classic houses that we've been getting over the last few years. So things like The Exorcist and The Shining last year and Poltergeist this year. And I really hope that's something that we continue with in the future. So that wraps up my review of the houses and scare zones for Halloween Horror Nights 28. I really didn't expect to be talking for such a long time. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do another video where I'll talk about Academy of Villains and the merchandise from this year. Did you go to Halloween Horror Nights this year? If you did, I want to see your house and scares and list, so leave them down below in the comments for me and we'll have a little chat about it. Because, like I said in the beginning, everybody's lists this year are so different and I really like seeing why people chose specific houses or specific zones. If you haven't already, I would love it if you'd subscribe and then that way you won't miss out on any of the Halloween Horror Nights videos that are coming over the next few months. But that is it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.